The Beach Pottery was founded in 1920 by Bernard Beach and Shoji Hamada in St. Ives, Cornwall, and therefore 2020 represents the centenary of the founding of one of the great British studio potteries. The Crafts Study Centre is celebrating the centenary by drawing on works from its own collections, but very specifically, mostly works that have been added to the centre over the past 20 years. In this case, we've presented some very, very early works by Leach and by Hamada, made both in Japan and at the St. Ives Pottery in the 1920s. On the top case, for example, you can see a little tea bowl by Leach, where he's engraved or inscribed his first kiln in Japan at Abiko. And then the lovely stoneware dish at the bottom of the case is one of Hamada's very earliest pieces made in St. Ives. So these are a testament and a record to early production in Japan by Leach and production of both independent potteries in Cornwall. At Leach, when he moved out to Japan in 1909, took with him an enormous printing press and he began his career with the stated ambition of producing etchings and indeed teaching etching to Japanese students. And in the Alan Bell archive, we can demonstrate that aspect of his work. Here's a drawing, probably of the Dorset countryside, called Little Stack. And to the right of the drawing is the etching which he's made back uh, in the studio. So we can immediately see the relationship between drawing in the field and the etching produced in the house. But Leach drew throughout his entire life on scraps of paper as well as more formally. And we can see a fine example dated 1945 here in Cornwall of Leach describing the rocky landscape at Travail. And here, what he calls the Northern Diver, uh, he also depicted swallows and other birds flying across the landscape. And perhaps 1945, this is suggested of the use of the bird as a symbolic bird of freedom. Leach is renowned, of course, for his long and influential career as a potter, and he produced works of domestic nature in many forms. The press were, of course, very important. To him. But he also found that he could use his intensely skilled graphic uh, abilities on tile panels. And he produced tile panels both as framed paintings, you might say. Uh, but he also described the relationship between the print here, a lithographic print from the 1970s, which relates back to the tile panel made in earlier years. The flying globe was one of Leach's favourite motifs, and here you can see him using it both on a pilgrim vessel and on these two plates at the bottom of the case. This case is important because it represents works that Leach himself personally donated to his third wife, Janet Leach, who gave these pots as birthday presents or anniversary presents, and they were displayed at the Leach Pottery in St. Ives in a kind of museum. Uh, the pots, sadly, suffered a theft, um, but they were all recovered. And these works have been gifted back to the Craft Study Centre on the estate of Janet Leach. And here the display represents that early use of the pots in the Leach Museum. One of the most important aspects of this exhibition is the way in which we've been able to present work that has never been seen in public before, including this book of Japanese handmade papers with, on the left-hand side, an affectionate drawing of Janet Darnell. Janet had come out to meet with Leach and Hamada in 1954, so this represents a drawing from the start of what was to become a relationship. Janet herself was a mercurial, independent, and charismatic maker of pots. She trained in Mashiko and other country potteries in Japan in uh, the 1950s and 1960s. And here, examples of her work show work that is completely different from the iconography of the Leach potteries. It's more sculptural in form 
and uses these wonderful expressive glaze marks on the vessel. She was also a very talented manager and businesswoman running the craftsman and setting the gallery up for the sale, for private sale of pots and ceramics and paintings in St. Ives, and in fact the gallery exists to this day. So Leach Pottery is not just the story of Bernard Leach, it's the story of all the potters, the many potters who worked and trained and were apprentices there. It's also a family story. So David Leach, for example, Bernard's eldest son, was hugely important in maintaining the success and the sustainability of the potter, and of course an independent potter of significance and importance himself, as demonstrated by works that he has generously gifted to the Craftstone Centre.